Hello everyone and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm about to visit Sayori, apparently. I decide to visit Sayori before Natsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom, where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Ryan. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces us a smile, but, she, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. Hehehe. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Natsuki today? Yeah, but... Wait, how'd you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last morning. Last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Yeah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Natsuki then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Ryan. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings. If I didn't make that stupid mistake. Then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You ever see that one uh, Pink Floyd movie, The Wall? It's got a very similar premise to this. Uh, I think the... I've never actually seen it myself, but I have seen the, uh, the super trippy scene where uh, he's falling apart emotionally as he realizes he's finally let himself be seen for who he is. Uh, I don't know, I feel like uh, that's a common trait of depression and depressive people that they uh, tend to close off their, themselves because they don't want to bother anyone else with their feelings. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. Sentence you to be exposed before your peers. He just wants to torture me. Hehehe. <laughs> Sayori. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know I won't be able to stop thinking about it. <laughs> Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Ryan. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Ryan? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. Reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am. Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. 
That's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. Alright folks, this marks the end of what I have already seen of Doki Doki Literature Club. From here on out, it is uncharted territory. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Does she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Ryan. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have had to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Ahaha. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club? feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. Ah ha ha. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Ryan. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah! Uh, uh, Ryan! Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Ryan... Sayori isn't tucking me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Ryan. I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish, too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. Hey. Don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently. Oh. <laughs> Gently, Sayori puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Ryan. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But her hugs are so warm. And that's really scary, too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival's tomorrow. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um... Uh... It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice, then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this had to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't! Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But... 
it's almost time for Natsuki to come meet me in my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Natsuki is about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. I spend only a few minutes back at home anxiously awaiting Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door to let her in. Sup? Hey. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniform threw me totally threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make it feel so awkward already! It's gonna be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Natsuki's carrying a large bag that is probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients that I, if I didn't already have them at home. Good. Glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly say that, rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she's a little different outside of school, after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. What, you're not even gonna offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, Ryan? Come on. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag Natsuki holds out to me. Ugh! This is ridiculously heavy! <laughs> I carry that all the way here! Are you impressed? I see, no. Yeah, I am impressed, Natsuki. Seems like I always underestimate you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. Natsuki hits a fist into my chest. Dude, come on! But I'm carrying the bag? Hey, hey. Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Eh? Um, it's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than other people. But, jeez, never mind! Size isn't everything, Natsuki. I know that more than most. What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school! Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you! <laughs> what? That's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Hey! Now you are treating me like a kid! I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you shouldn't treat me like... Uh... Natsuki catches her words and her face turns red. Yeah, okay, you're lesbian for Yuri, I gotcha. Natsuki... Forget it! I didn't say anything! I should apologize. Eh? I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate, too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Okay, hold it right there, dude. I know what you're gonna say, and Lolly is not cool. Ah! How would you know that anyway? Just trust me on this one. I look at a lot of porn. Gross! Hey! Was that to me? Who else? Man, let's just get started already. Ahaha! <laughs> you get all sour when a girl calls you gross! I finally find your weakness, Ryan! No, I get all sour when you do. Natsuki smiles deviously. Please, spare me. Well, if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's satisfied for now, finally starting to pull things on out of her bag so we can get started. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. You can tell by how messy it is. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour, spilled fluid, and plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. 
The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. Ryan, where did you put the food coloring? The batter's going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays! I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To color the batter, of course! I'm making each tray a different color! That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite! Oh, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Come on! You're not putting any heart into this at all! Can't you at least try to have fun? Okay, look, if you're color-coding the cupcakes, you don't need to color-code the icing, too. I'm having fun. I'm not really sure what Natsuki's trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring into each. Oh, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end if I... If just looking at it makes everyone's eyes lighten up. Like the ones you made on my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cookies and Sayori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that, too. Yeah. Maybe I will use the food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Eh? Huh? The icing's still all lumpy! Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that! Here, look! Natsuki grabs the whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to BEAT THE CRAP OUT OF IT! After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As I have to emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. HEY! Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing! Your icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger towards it. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next! I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some with my finger, just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. Ah! The force of Natsuki pulling me caused me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. Gross! You got it on my face! Whose fault is that? Oh no, my sticky white stuff is all over her face! Oh no! There's a big glob of icing on, of icing on Natsuki's cheek. Mm. She tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Yeah, that doesn't work. Jeez! You know what? Take this! Natsuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger toward my own face. You wish? I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Ah, stop! Not until you apologize for, call for calling me gross. Okay, seriously, what is up with that little canine right there? It's bothering me. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know? Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me? You really shouldn't tease girls like that. No, I'm saying dumb things because I'm dumb. Haven't you seen my character arc? Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I take Natsuki's finger and- Oh, God, really? Come on, dude, no tact. What? Did you seriously just- ah! Natsuki's so surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Yeah, because that was, like, weird, dude. Ryan! You really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls. Unless you really like them. You know that, right? What kind of question is she asking me just like that? Oh, sure, I'm the bad guy. Yeah, okay. How did the mood turn to this so quickly? I... Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Dude, fucking chill. <laughs> I don't know where the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. <coughs> no wonder! You left a dirty tray in here, dummy! How could you make a mistake like that? You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes! Jeez. Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. Then another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. The tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads. 
Fucking borderline rapist. Alright, that's all the time I have for today. Everyone, have a nice day, safe trip home, drive safely, and I will see you on the next episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. Goodbye!